wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. Who knew we do another? We just keep making them. I don't know. It seems like we had something to do with our with uh, doing them. But that's all the more reason to refer the show to your family, friends, relatives. Ask people to subscribe to the Chris Voss Show. Go see our LinkedIn newsletter. That thing is killing it over there. And also our 132,000 group LinkedIn on LinkedIn. I think it's called the Chris Voss Show. It becomes a leadership group. You can follow it over there. Just follow me on LinkedIn, and I'll get you hooked up. Also, go to all of our groups, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. And, of course, go to YouTube.com. You see the video version of this for free for an unlimited time. You want to grab that deal. It's still available. And uh, check that baby out. Uh, and I think that does, oh, goodreads.com, for slash Chris Voss. You can see my books over there and all the books of all the great authors we have on the show, reading and reviewing. Today we have an amazing woman on the show. She is coming to us, uh, and uh, we'll be talking with her today. Brigida Herferle is on the show with us today, and she is a German female business owner that lives the American dream. Owner and founder of two educational institutions, one for children, MontessoriCleveland.com, and one for adults, CenterOfNLP.com, two opposite educational facilities. Yes, because children are innocent by nature. It's the adults around them that shape the growth and potential in each child. As a powerfully engaging and professional international speaker, she is also known as the Fast Track Female Trainer and retired lead coach of one of the largest self-development companies in the world. She is the leading mentor, business coach, and author that is invited to speak on stages around the world, and she's with us today. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, Chris. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Thanks for coming. We certainly appreciate you being on the show. Give us your dot coms uh, one more time so we can uh, check out at you and maybe other people can follow you on the internet. Absolutely. Centerofnlp.com. Centerofnlp.com. All one word. There you go. There you go. So uh, tell us uh, about a little bit about you, kind of your origin story. Uh, you say you're living the American dream. Uh, give us some history on yourself so we can get an idea of who you are. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Um, well, I was born and raised in Germany and uh, lived in a born and raised in a very small community, 600 people village. Couldn't wait to get the heck out of there. You know, any, any American that would go there, Chris, would go, oh, it's gorgeous. You know, vineyards all around. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a place where you want to go and taste wines and, and lay in the vineyards and, and eat grapes directly from the vine. But I couldn't wait to get the heck out of there because uh, <laughs> it was very narrow minded. And, and always, ever since I was a little girl, I had this big vision of being and, and, and my sister sisters uh, told me about this being on stage when I was a grown up. I can't remember that, but my children, all, uh, my, my sisters always told me that. But, you know, growing up in a small village in Germany um, to incredible parents that always poured into myself and not just financially, but mentally and always told me, you know, you're a tool for humanity. You can do this. Chris, I remember one time sitting in front of the TV and we had a black and white TV that was kind of, you know, sitting on the ground. It was very small. And uh, I watched a commercial um, where I saw children with bloated bellies and flies all over their, you know, uh, naked bodies or, or, or mostly naked bodies. And I cried. I must have been six, maybe five. And I cried and I looked to my mom and I said, they need help. And my mom's like, oh, that's an advertisement, right? But what did I know? Um, and I said, I want to help. And she says, okay, so what are you going to do? And I said, hmm, what am I going to do? I have all of these toys that I no longer play with, that I no longer need, and so do my friends. So let me drum up all my friends in the village, because we all went to the same kindergarten, right? They all knew, knew Brigida because Brigida had the, the bridge 
behind the house that would uh, cross over the little river in the backyard over to the big meadow that we always trampled the, the grass down. Mm -hmm. And the farmers was really upset with us. But anyway, so I, I, I gathered my friends and we brought all of our toys together. We gathered on a Saturday. We, we draw poster boards of, hey, come on Saturday to the bread house is where all of the women would bake their pies and breads on Saturday. Mm -hmm. In front of the bread house, we're going to have a yard sale and we're going to sell our stuff. And mm -hmm. we did. Mm -hmm. And we raised a hundred and... I think it was 160 Deutschmarks back then, uh, which probably translate to, I don't know, 150 US dollars today. And we donated it to what turns out to be Bread for the World. We donated oh, wow. it. We got a letter back like months and months later. I already forgot about it. Got a letter back that said, hey, thank you for making a difference. No, oh, wow. and that's pretty cool. And And that today, even today, you know, raises a lot of emotions within me because I think that was the start of me really owning to be a tool for humanity. Well, that's awesome. That's a beautiful journey and and something it like early on you tapped into that. Yeah, and if it weren't for my parents, I I don't think I could have tapped into that. Yeah. Uh, my my parents definitely were the the cheerleader of a can-do mentality. There you go. There you go. So what what took you on your journey from there? Um then I went, you know, the, the, the normal route, went to school, um, hated school, was not a good student. I'll be really honest with you. <laughs> I Didn't was... like to read, you know, yeah. uh, I was always a loud kid. Um, and, uh, you know, often I would hear, oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? And later on, I realized, well, there's not a whole lot of wrong with me. Why are more people not asking what's right with you? And going, you know, leaving German high school and going into university, I became a teacher. I never did anything with it. Just kind of held a teaching degree because, you know, you got to do something after school. So I was like, oh, OK, I'll be a teacher. OK. And then um, out of that, I went to um, several different other you know corporate jobs, climbed the corporate ladder, got another degree, got a marketing degree. And out of that, um, then became a parent. And out of that, I remember as I was pregnant, I remember um, my teaching degree times of the Montessori method. And the Montessori method is all about seeing the individual child and wanting to pour not into the individual child, but allow the child for everything that's already great within them to let that come out. Mm -hmm. And I'm as I'm, you know, holding this baby within me, I'm thinking, I want my child to be in a Montessori school. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lived in Munich at the time, uh, had a great corporate um, job and, you know, uh, was a marketing manager for Murdoch Holding. Was you know everything was fine and dandy, and turns out the Montessori school that I wanted my daughter, who wasn't born yet, to go to had a three-year wait list. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I knew an opportunity when I see one. I have a whole, I have a teaching degree. Let me add my Montessori degree on top of that, and let me start a Montessori school. Mm -hmm. Well, that all sounds very easy. You know, fast forward, it wasn't all that easy. But one of the one of the creeds that I live by is there is no failure on your feedback. Chris, I got mm -hmm. a li lot of feedback in my life. I got yeah. a lot of feedback. Most most of mine is like four letter words that people throw at me. So. <laughs> we won't name them. Yeah, well, they're, they're mostly well, the my mom and my dad mostly. So, you know, it's, they love me. I think I, I'm not sure. I'm you, just you know you know what's the worst four-letter word? And it's a word that we can actually say on radio what? is can't. C -A -N -T. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's and a lot of A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people hear can't um, and then believe it that they can't. <laughs> you just use the word can't twice. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Just to make a point. There you go. Because I can. We got it. Yeah. So, I okay, I so. I, I can't come I, up with I, any more jokes than that, though. No, Okay. <laughs> Uh, I came uh, to the U.S. to build a Montessori school, did that. Over the pandemic, we grew to 125 students. But out of that, I was, you know, we were, were still teaching children and I'm coaching down the road. You know, the school's been around now for 18 years. I've been coaching parents because they come back to me and they go, Brigitte, how come you have a different child 
at school than we have at home. And I'm like, well, that's not on you. That's not on me. That's just, you know, the boundaries that we set in each facility, in each environment. And they're like, yeah, well, teach me, right? So I taught them and I coached them. And out of that, I realized what you read earlier, that children are innocent by nature. It's the adults around them that screw them up. <laughs> I'm innocent. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know if you have kids or if you're no, innocent. No, no, I skipped the whole kid thing. I have two dogs. I got engaged twice, but I couldn't afford the divorces. So I didn't ever get <laughs> fully married. You know, I'm not rich. What can I say? But no, I I, I, I understand the, the premise. Um, you know, kids look at things in a very innocent world. They ask a lot of questions, too. I was just listening to, uh, I think it's uh, Robert Greene's book, uh, 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 40 Laws of Power, I think. I'm not sure I got the first name right. But, uh, you know, he talks about how when kids are young, they ask questions and they have a kind of, they 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 have a questioning mind like why why is it done this way you know because everything's foreign to them they're like I don't understand your social construct and uh, and then we lose all that when we become adults like you say either we either we lose that curiosity or we have such limiting beliefs of the people around us that tell us what we can or cannot do hmm. um, or you know they pass you know as parents we only do the best that we can with the resources that we have and sometimes we pass on our own stuff to our mm -hmm. kids and they just soak it up maria montessori wrote many books and one of them is called um the absorbent mind so our kids the idea is that you know the brain of a child is a is a sponge and mm -hmm. it just soaks it up there's no judgment it just is what is mm -hmm. so out of that i uh poured well let me back up here real quick so i build the business right as this cocky young german woman coming into a small town in Tennessee to build a Montessori <laughs> school. Just picture that, okay? Yeah, I can picture that. <laughs> um, they thought, you know, for the first three years, I think they thought they brought the devil into the city. Uh, or it wasn't even I think city. that's pretty much what they think of everything in Tennessee, right? I don't know. Mm, just, yeah. They want the Tennessee yeah. crowd. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So um, I had to do a whole lot of explaining for a long time. Mm. And that br actually brought me on the seat of the Chamber of Commerce. And I sat around a boardroom table with a bunch of, I'm just going to call it as it is, a bunch of old white men. <laughs> Here really? I am. See? No way. <laughs> I know. What a shock, right? Didn't see that 25 going. years younger, at least, and a different gender, still same. Skateboard. And a German, too. And a German. You know, yeah, I'm that German. Was I'm Voss, so I can pull that joke. Voss. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was interesting. And I didn't give up, though. Remember, you know, no failures, only feedback. Yeah, like that, a lot of feedback. And, um, I also mentioned, you know, the cockiness of Brigida. Mm. Uh, that doesn't work little... with old white men. That didn't work. That actually didn't work with the teachers oh. that I hired. That didn't work with the parents that came to my school to pay really good tuition money. Yeah, that didn't work on a lot of levels. Mm. So I had, to, I had to, well, first, I was like, they're all idiots, right? <laughs> so what, what do we do as humans? We first point fingers at everyone else. They're all idiots. They Wait, don't we're understand. not supposed to do that? No. <laughs> well, you can if it takes oh. you where you want to go. <laughs> okay. As long as it works for me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it didn't work for me because I had a huge turnaround. And mm -hmm. um, that didn't work so well for me. And I lost teachers. And through the huge turnaround and revolving door in teachers, the parents are like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong with her? She can't even run a business with and keep you know, a, a, a dedicated staff, and then they would pull their children. And mm -hmm. then 2008 came, you know, real estate bubble, a lot of realtors at my school that paid tuition for their kids. That was a problem. So I was like, okay, 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 I get it. I get it. It's not, they're not the dummies. It's actually, there's only one dummy in this whole equation, and that's myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a lot of humble pie that I chose to eat. And uh, I poured more of learnings into myself. Mm -hmm. That's always now, wise. Yeah, but remember when I said earlier that in school I wasn't the best student? Uh -oh. 
Yeah. So it was hard, right? I'm not going to not going to sugarcoat it. It was hard. It was worth it. And that's when I found um, the methodology of neurolinguistic programming hmm. to use on first of all in my own conversations to myself. Hmm. Uh, am I really having the conversations with myself that are uplifting and that are powerful and supportive or am I constantly do, putting myself down and you know the only the only quality in conversations that you have with yourself are or then the ones that you have going outwards as well it starts mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. so I had to take inventory for a while and started learning and, and really adapting and, and continuing to learn and then start you know doing business development around that and staff development around that and it just started to really become stronger and more supportive and, and um, yeah, and, and helpful, not just for me, but then also for my teachers and the business itself. So that's how I came to then, long story short, to um, purchase the business, the center of NLP that's been around since 1986. I don't know. Oh, wow. Do you remember 1986? All I, I do, actually. Uh, that was the year yeah. I graduated school. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good college, time. The 80s were high good school. times. They were the best times. I don't know. Right? Doesn't everyone say that about their high school years, though? I don't know. Well, remember school? I was glad when it was over. <laughs> yeah. The music was the best part of the 80s. I agree. So, yeah. Great I movie. totally agree. So, yeah, uh, so that was a good omen that, uh, you know, 1986 was built. Um, I'm a kid of the uh, 80s and I love 80s music. So that was an absolute perfect fit. Of course, there was so much more. Um, and I acquired the business, uh, although I wasn't looking at getting another, buying another brick and mortar. And I'm glad I did. I'm mm -hmm. glad I did for my own sake. And I'm glad I did for um, my family and my staff and the people around me. Awesome. So tell us about the center of NLP then, what it does, how you guys do it, uh, how people can, you know, they're interested in working with you, can reach out to you, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, you know, for the ones that some people might uh, recognize NLP and what it means, um, I'm going to decipher it really quick. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um what does that mean? And I'm going to start with the programming part because most people kind of get confused by what does that mean, programming? Are you programming other people? Well, quite frankly, Chris, I think you know this more than anyone else. We constantly program ourselves by the things that we tell ourselves, think to ourselves, hear other people say about ourselves, um, pour the, the things that we pour into our brain TV programming, hello, um, radio programs, uh, video programs, uh, social media programs, all of that has an influence in our behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the programming is. So how can we have a better influence on our behavior inward to ourselves and outward to other people to really build lasting relationships? Because at the end of the day, people ask me all the time, Brigitte, how do you build those businesses? How do you, you know, how do you have the success that you have? How do you even, you know, cross a, cross cultures? Well, it starts out with having the right mindset and and having an impact on people. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have an impact on people, then that just says a little bit more about your own behavior that you have towards <laughs> yourself. Yeah. I, mean, I first heard about NLP through uh, Tony Robbins, and I think it was actually 1989 when I first met Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in fact, he's got a new book coming out. Um, but uh, we invited him on the show. Uh, so tell us more about uh, you know how, how do how do clients reach out to your people that are interested reach out to you, and and then what sort of different services or courses you provide? Yeah, Tony Robbins is a fellow NLP grandmaster. Mm -hmm. um, so trainings, we have uh, all sorts of trainings for individuals, uh, corporate trainers, corporate trainings, and they start out with um, knowing what you want, where do you want to be in life, and what's holding you back. So the uh, neuro part is the thought, the linguistic part is the communication, the programming part is the behavior. Um, 
So you, through our trainings, may they be introductions to NLP, may they be practitioner courses of NLP, may they be master courses of NLP, we offer them. Mm -hmm. and, what, and, and there are a lot of different programs on NLP out there. A lot are on YouTube, University, and if you don't see me, you see me do some air quotation marks right now. Of course, I'm being sarcastic. Um, NLP is the meta program of our language. And um, if you are not, if you cannot intentionally communicate and um, form sentences, if you will, um, then you cannot intentionally communicate. So if NLP is our meta program and you don't know how to use it, that's a problem. Mm. Um, so you learn that within um, the center of NLP and you learn that within the, the trainings that we do. We do them hybrid, you know, in person. We're building a big center right now. Um, and also, you know, during the pandemic, we had to switch to live online, which yeah. was, we did that, although I was kicking and screaming, Chris. I did not want to do that. That was one thing I was like, we're not going to do that because I want to bring value, value, value to people. So, yeah, it's, it's um, taking a while to get used to that this whole Zoom thing. Yeah, yeah. Now we're kind of addicted to it, right? But uh, we've done a great job in in creating hybrid courses where we have people in the room and people in the Zoom room, and they're interacting with each other with different cameras. Um, the biggest you asked me how people can find us, centerofnlp.com. All of our courses and all of the information is on that website, or people can just you know email me real quick. Brigitta at centerofnlp.com. Brigitta at centerofnlp.com. Brigitta, just like you sounded out, really easy. B R I G I T T A at centerofnlp.com. Um, but people, you know, again, I'm go I want to go back to the programming, Chris. People get programming mixed up with manipulation. Mm. Um, and I want to speak to that really quick because, first of all, no one can be manipulated against their values. Like you mentioned Tony Robbins earlier, he's an incredible master at the pattern interrupt and really having great breakthroughs for people. Mm -hmm. He does never, he never goes against people's, their own values because mm -hmm. people will take themselves out if you go against their values. He's mm -hmm. just really good at reading people's values and he's a master at it. And NLP helps you with that. And so the difference between manipulation and having an influence on people is the intention behind it. And that's mm. it. I'm going to okay. say that again, because it's most, it's most important that people really understand that the difference between manipulation and influence is the intention behind it. And that's it. Mm. And, and when you realize that you can go to communicate with others, to build relationships, not just on a win, win relationship, because a one win is only manipulation, right? Mm -hmm. A win win is a win for you and a win for me. Mm -hmm. But we really look at win 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 a win for you, a win for me, and a win for the community, the greater good, you know, your network, my network, the family, the company, whatever the the third win may be. Mm. Well, that's so looking at that third win is 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 most important. There you go. There you go. Uh, so you have a lot of different things that pro courses that are on your thing. You've got a uh, NLP coaching certification, group coaching, uh, mastery, uh, corporate training is on your website as well. Uh, Correct. Do you want to touch on a few of those? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I want to touch on, let's touch on coaching first, because over the pandemic, with everyone having a Zoom room and a green screen and a ring light and maybe even an external microphone, they think, ooh, I, you know what? I have um, experience one year, two years in X area. Let me be a coach. Let me speak to that. Um, people often ask, you know, oh, uh, you know, XYZ is a life coach or XYZ may be abundant, maybe an abundant coach. Well, I, I hardly know any life coaches that truly have a life. And even worse, abundance coaches that are abundant. So if you hear those two words, I would say run for the hills. It's a red flag. But coaching has has real value when you have coaches 
that actually bring real, real value and know how to ask questions. A coach is never someone that gives you advice. A coach is someone that asks you great quality questions so you can come to your own conclusions. Mm. So we have coaching certifications. I, I serve on the International Coaching Federation Board here in Atlanta, Georgia, the ICF board. Um, so we take coaching. I personally take coaching very seriously because if you do it wrong, mm -hmm. you can really, you know, have people get into mm, not so good situations. So the person that that's coaching you, I sure hope knows what they're doing. OK, so vet your coaches, folks. Um, then we have the train the leader, lead the trainer program or the train the trainer program. Um, that is for the NLP masters that already have the mastery um, level uh, of advanced language patterns. And they are selling either from stage or they want to speak in front of a, uh, an audience, may it be online or offline. Uh, we have the practitioner course. That's, of course, to have the foundational pieces of neurolinguistic programming. And there are many strategies um, within those success laws of NLP. Oh, and by the way, I came, uh, I brought a gift. If we're, are we good to yeah. uh, distributing a gift? Yes, please. Um, I'm going to find it here. And do we have a chat in here where we do. I can post it? Okay. Yeah. We, it it's is called, chat. yep. Okay. Fantastic. I'll send it to you. It is called the, um, success loss checklist. Mm -hmm. And it is an incredible reminder to, um, anyone that is looking for either, you know, some call them affirmations or some call them reminders of which direction do I want to go to? What do I want to do with my life? And one of the things that I shared with you earlier, um, you know, there's no failure, only feedback. That's one of the success laws. Hmm. There are many other success laws. I'm going to put it in here. There are many other success laws like um, there are no unresourceful people. There are only unresourceful state of minds. Mm -hmm. um, people are only as good as their mindset or their mm -hmm. communication is only as good as their mindset. Mm -hmm. um, which brings you back to the resources. If you don't like what you're getting, go back to your mindset and see what you can adjust in that. One of the yeah. success laws is uh, change one modality, change them all. So modality is either seeing, hearing, or feeling. So if you're thinking something, you can get up, go for a walk with a dog, mm -hmm. and through that motion, get into a different mindset. So change mm. one modality, change them all. So there are many, many success laws within that checklist. That's my gift to the listeners and viewers. Oh, that's awesome. And that's, uh, let me give the link to it because they won't be able to see the chat. Center of NLP.com, Forecast Product, NLP Success Dash Laws Dash Checklist. Uh, if you search for the Success Laws Checklist, NLP on her website, Center of NLP.com, you should be able to find it. Um, so yeah, pretty darn awesome. The um, anything uh, else that we uh, should need to cover on what you do and how you do it. Oh, boy. I mean, we can I can talk all day. If you haven't noticed that yet, I will talk your ear off all day and I will talk about, you know, God in the world and everything in between. If you want to do that. There you go. And I think we I have that up on the screen now, that website. Oh, so those of you who are watching on YouTube can see that on the screen. And then uh, also we'll have it on the uh, post on the ChrisFoshShow.com. So you'll be able to get it there. Um, yeah. Anything more you want to touch on before we go out on on who on, you know, what you guys do, how you do it. One of the best ways people can reach out to you guys and get to know you better. Yes. Well, first of all, you know, I am, like I said, I can talk, um, I can talk to anyone and everyone all day. I love talking. Um, I love meeting new people. So if there's any questions that anyone has, Chris, uh, the, the easiest and best way is to reach out to me. And I'm going to post this here as well. Maybe you can post it okay. is, um, Brigitte at center of and reach out to me, schedule a time to talk to me, ask questions, come to one of our um, introductions of NLP if you want to learn more. We have people from all around the world. Uh, and thank God to uh, for the, the pandemic because 
it was February 2020 that I said to my staff, we will never, ever, 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 ever go live online. We will always do our trainings in person because of the value and the exercises and the experiences that we have for the people. And we know the, the difference it makes in people, right? Well, you know, you know how the saying goes, uh, God, uh, man makes plan and God laughs. Yeah, pretty much. I think so. God yeah. had a pretty good laugh on me. That yeah. definitely goes. Well, as we go out, uh, anything more you want to touch on? No, I okay. reach out to me, get your ch success loss checklist. Uh, would love to continue the conversation. And uh, thanks for having me. There you go. Thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, give us your plugs again so we can find you on the interwebs. Centerofnlp.com, or you can simply look for my first and last name and Google it. I am the only, and I don't say this lightly, but I'm the only Brigitte Höfele out there. Brigitte Höfele, H-O-E-F-E-R-L-E. When you Google me, Brigitte Höfele, uh, on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, on YouTube, I'm right there. It's the only one out there. Uh, you can't miss me. You already see me by the hair. If you can see me, um, <laughs> you, you know, there's really not a whole lot to miss. There but you if you don't, if you don't see me, you will miss out. You will miss out. So don't miss. Uh, we certainly appreciate you being on the show. Thanks, my honest, for tuning in. Be sure to go to goodreads.com for just Chris Voss. Uh, see the video version of this on youtube.com. You can see uh, her email so that you can take and uh, or to click the links and all that good stuff. Uh, they'll be on the Chris Voss show as well. So if you miss them, you can grab them there. But subscribe to the YouTube anyway. Go to all groups, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and all that good stuff. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time.